Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us on another episode of the Northwest Fishing Club podcast. Tonight's special guest, we have Jeff Goodwin. Jeff is a professional fishing guide down in Northern California and runs a team of independent guides that fish the Sacramento and Trinity Rivers, as well as Shasta and Whiskey Town Lakes. Um, so thank you for joining us tonight, Jeff. Can you start us off by giving the viewers who may not be familiar with you um, just a little bit about, about your background as becoming a guide? Yeah, you bet, Stephen. Um, you know, I, I grew up in Northern California on the coast um, over by Eureka. And uh, of course, I lived in a, in a town called Ferndale um, and it's a kind of a, a cow town, uh, but it's bordered by the Eel River. And so I lived just a few miles from the Eel and, um, you know, really that's where I got my start in fishing. That's where, you know, I guess the passion began um, before I even knew it was a passion. And uh, so, you know, I had the opportunity to, to grow up there and experience some of the the good fishing, you know, in the, in the seventies and, uh, even, even the early eighties. And, um, uh, then I, I graduated high school and I went in the army. And so that took me, took me to Korea. It took me to the, the East coast, took me, you know, um, back to, to Washington state where, um, I was stationed at Fort Lewis. And so I kind of got back into, into fishing in Washington, um, because in the, you know, the mid eighties, some of the, the fishing in Washington was, was really good. Uh, the sturgeon fishing was great. Uh, you could keep two sturgeon, you know, slot sturgeon every day, 365 days a year back then. <laughs> um, not so much like that anymore, but, um, you know, on the steelhead fishing was really good too. And that's, that was kind of like where I, I cut my teeth. That's where, when I really started getting into it and thought, Hey, you know what, I'm going to hire some guy to take me fishing and I want to catch a big steelhead. And, um, so I hired, you know, quite a few guides in the, in that area and, um, started to, you know, get even more of a passion, uh, for, for salmon and steelhead fishing. And then I ended up, um, I got out of the army and, and went to work for, um, Boeing commercial aircraft because I was a, a helicopter mechanic in the army. And so that kept me in Washington and I stayed there for about 12 years total. Um, before I, I left and, and moved back to California though, I got to this, you know, kind of a, a flat spot in, in my career at Boeing. And I was so young when I got that job, I thought, you know, this isn't, I'm not doing this for 40 years, right? I got to do something else. And, but I had a, had a young family and, um, I didn't get a lot of time off, um, but I made pretty decent money. So I was able to get a, a nice um, couple of nice boats, you know, that led into a, a you know, a Luma Weld 21 footer. I started, you know, hanging out on the river and meeting some guys. And I ended up booking a guy named Ron Rogers and um, he took me steelhead fishing on my local river, which was the Skycomish river. And, we caught some steelhead the first first couple of trips I went out with them. And I went out a couple of times on my own and started catching steelhead. And anyways, Ron and I kind of maintained a, a friendship. And um, he asked me one one time, he said, you know, he said, if you're interested in, in doing a little bit of guiding, I could I could surely use the help. And, you know, that was I was in my I think I was in my mid 20s. And I was like, really? <laughs> you know, I could do something like that. And so he kind of took me under his wing and, and um, we worked together for a couple of years. You know, I still had my job, but um, I'd work on the weekends and um, I'd take vacation and um, we'd head over to Hanford in, in the in the summertime, you know, September and, and fish Kings over there because he had a lot of corporate accounts and stuff like that. So that's, that's you know, we're really where I guess the, the passion for guiding began, you know, it was fun. I liked it. I liked, you know. I like making a, a, you know, a few dollars here and there. And um, then, you know, life, life circumstances, you know, brought me back to California and I ended up, um, you know, working in, in for state government for quite a few years. And um, I was lucky enough to have a job that, you know, I got a lot of time off and, uh, you know, during the, the month. And then I got a lot of time off, you know, for vacation and stuff like that. So I think it was like 2000. Um, I was 
was I was on like a, a road trip and I drove through Klamath um, and I saw a boat, a jet craft sitting out there next to the highway and it was for sale and, and it just kind of grabbed me and I just said, you know what, I'm going to buy that boat. I'm going to get back into fishing. And even though I grew up in, in that area, I'd never fished the Klamath before. So I got the boat, the, you know, the guy that, that sold me the boat um, owned a little resort down there in Requa. And he saved up a bunch of eggs for me and and um, when I went and picked up the boat, um, he gave me a bunch of eggs. I went home, you know, cured them and started fishing the Klamath. And that's back then, too. The Klamath was pretty good. It had some tough years, but um, I ended up catching way more fish than I, I anticipated. Right. It was just really good. The learning curve was really short for me. And so, you know, I started taking buddies fishing and start taking neighbors fishing and um that kind of just evolved into um during those those clama seasons which was about all i i fished or, or really even guided at that time um i would take time off and, and go up there and experience some great fishing so um i did that for boy probably like 15 years um you know on and off and i ended up getting to a point to where i started to kind of look around, experience some other fisheries. And, you know, Humboldt County, there's there's not a lot going on over there. A lot of the, the rivers are catch and release. Most of them are drift boat, you know, type rivers. And it just wasn't wasn't my thing. You know, it wasn't I owned a couple of drift boats and I didn't use them very much. It's like, man, I just like like jumping in my power boat and going up river, down river, and then going back when I'm done. Um, so so I started looking around and so we started looking north and I started fishing with a, a couple of guides over here. Um, some of the, the coast guides would come over here for striper season. Um, the Klamath had a really tough year one year. And so some of those guys came over and salmon fished. So I kind of got this little bit of exposure to um, what the Sacramento Valley had to offer. And, you know, just, I don't know, probably about 40, I was about 48 and right after my daughter was born and, and Janie and I decided, Hey, you know what, let's move to the Valley, right? Let's go over there. And, um, I kind of, I just like to guide full time and in a couple of years I'll be able to. So let's go, let's go make a run at it. And so we did moved over and, um, I, I moved to a place called Lake California. It was right next to the river, right next to the barge hole, actually. Um, they had their a private boat launch there, um, all kinds of cool stuff. And so I just started fishing, right? Fish every, every opportunity I got, I'd fish for, for the resident rainbows that we have here and salmon seasons. And, um, you know, we have a short steelhead season. Um, and then, you know, I also started fishing some of the lakes, right. And for bass, it's like Shasta has got some great bass fishing. Let's, let's, let's learn how to fish for bass on Shasta. And that turned into um, fishing for trout. And it turned into um, looking around at some of the other local lakes, kokanee, um, stuff like that. And boy, then, then I think 2012 or 13, I, I had a website built. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna gear up. I'm gonna get things going and um, I'm going to make, make a run at this, this whole guide thing. And I had a few more years of, of, I guess, cushion where I could kind of work on stuff like that. And then a couple of years later, I was, I was done. I was done working for the state and I started guiding full time and everything got kind of real. And here I am, <laughs> you know, it's, I guess, uh, yeah, 10 years later. So we can talk about, you know, how that whole thing happened and how, how I got to where, where I am now and what helped and, and, and all that stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, let's talk a bit about that. So what do you um, kind of contribute to your success? Uh, you got what, three or four guys that work for you now? Yeah, we have, um, you know, our, I guess our, our, our model or business model kind of kind of changed from being a guide service that had so much work that um, I couldn't 
possibly do it all on my own. So I started looking for guys that can help me out. And um, I found two guys right away because I've been fishing around them for years. And my, my only really solid criteria was that they were great guys and that, you know, it was something that they were in for, you know, the long haul with. And, and so, you know, I, I brought them on, brought them on, started giving them trips. Um, and then I had another, another guy that um, I kind of strategically brought on as well. Um, and he's a, he's a great guy. And um, so we did kind of a, a guide service with a bunch of associate guides. And I guess before I get too far out of that, you know, one of the biggest challenges that we had in the very beginning was um, I, I put a lot of time into marketing my name. And so when you do that, you know, in the, in the guide world, people want to fish with you because they read your articles, they hear about you from friends or family or whoever, and, or, or, you know, clients that fished with you when you're coming up, you know, when you're, you're trying, you know, to, to, to build your business. And so all of a sudden I had, I had two and then and three guys running trips for me. And we got into kind of a pinch where people would book these trips and we were like, well, how do we tell them that they're not going to be fishing with Jeff? Right. Right. They're going to be in great hands. They're going to love their guide, but they weren't going to be fishing with Jeff. And, you know, we got, we got tripped up a few times by clients that thought that they were going to fish with me and they, they weren't, and they didn't really appreciate kind of not getting all of the info, you know? And so I think you find that a lot, you know, with people hiring guides and stuff. A lot of times they buy the name or they buy the, the person that, that they want to fish with and throwing other guys into the mix can be complicated. So I changed, I, you know, we kind of brainstormed it and we, we thought, you know what, let's call this thing a team, right? It's a fishing team. So that way when people, you know, book with us, Jeff Goodwin fishing team, they know it's not just me, right? There's a team of guides and it's kind of, it kind of explains itself. And surprisingly it, it caught on really quick. And that little, that little time frame that, you know, we kind of struggled with dealing with clients that, you know, were disappointed with the fact that they weren't fishing with me, ended up, you know, having great times with whoever they, you know, people now is like, well, I'd like to fish with this guy, but, you know, I'll fish with anybody, right? Because we've just kind of established that, I don't know, that, that name out there that people are just okay with fishing with us, right? Instead right. of that's, just me. Right? That's one of the, that's one of the things I say a lot, Jeff, is, is, is now, <clears throat> you know, when I first started, it was the same thing. It was Todd Bowles Cut Service. Um, and for the lakes that I fish up, up north, you know, I have a couple of gentlemen that help me out, Nick Kenny and Alex Prince. And, um, you know, without those guys by my side, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. Um, you know, mm -hmm. and we're really quick to come, you know, tell everybody, Hey, you know, we're, I wish I would have named it Todd Lotus Guide Service. I wish. I'd, and so and exactly that. I never looked at it from, uh, from the perspective you just said it of, yes, it's a team. These guys are every bit as competent as me, uh, if not a little bit more, uh, this last year, you know, with what we caught, you would tell you, you know, it's, they are, they caught bigger fish than I did. Um, it's that team environment that people, and now we, we are getting to that area, that, that place now. Well, I mean, I've got guests that call up and they're like, well, I fished with you last year. So I want to go fish with this, you know, with Alex, or I want to fish with Nate or, you know, they bounce around, um, with all of us because, you know, they see us fish together. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we're pretty, you know, uh, the way we fish up there is a little bit different, you know, we're not trolling, we're jigging. And so, you know, we can fish pretty tight to each other. Uh, it's when they see us interact together and the camaraderie that they, that they see, they're like, we can be on anybody's boat. We're going to get pretty much the same, you know, really close to the same experience, but there are, there are guests that just connect with you a little bit better. True. Right. They just, you just see a little bit, a little bit clearer with each other. And they're like, well, you know, we fish with everybody and I just really like to be on your boat. Um, but yeah, I wish, you know, the, um, what people don't understand is, you know, when we, when we have these guides, you know, you bring them on. I mean, that, there's a level of trust there that is 
you know, uh, I had a, a guy ask me for a job here this year. I'm like, it don't work like that. You yeah. have to meet the guys. You know, you have to be a good fit with everybody. It's not just it's not just me saying, yeah, you're a great you're a great guy, great fisherman. Come on, let's go to work. It's a family. I mean, we work really close together, and, and we have to have that trust. And so, you know, that's trying to explain that to, to the guest is, you know, they wouldn't, they would, I wouldn't fish with them if they, if they were not good, good people. Right. Right. And that's one of the, that's one of the big, that's one of the big success factors, right? Absolutely. It's, it's not all about, okay, well, we fish this many days or I can get this much business in this season or that season. Um, you know, you kind of, I think, you know, for like younger guides that are watching, um, who just may not really completely understand, you know, why, and some guides never choose to work with other guides. And there's probably a, a, a bunch of reasons for that too, but right, right. Um, that's, you know, you're only as good as, as the people around you. And yep. when you get to that point in your, in your, your business where you have to make a choice, okay, am I gonna, am I gonna just fish the people that, that call me and turn away everyone that I can't fish? Or am I going to bring some really good people in to, to help me out? to kind of extend, you know, what I, I already have built um, and make it a little bit broader. So you have to make that decision. When you get to a point to where you're that busy, it's like, I'm just going to do my own thing or I'm going to expand. I'm going to bring some guys in, not any old guys, you know, I mean, just really <laughs> great people. And then, you know, watch where it goes from there. But yeah, it's. But it's I, I, I think it's a difference in guides. In, in all honesty, is you know when I when I look around me, I want to I want to help everybody surpass the highest level that I could have achieved. Uh, nothing makes me happy, you know the um, you know to see to to see somebody take an opportunity and a little bit of information and then outfish you. You know the a lot of people take that personal, um, which I, you know I think we do, but it's a healthy it's a healthy competition. You know, um, mm -hmm. it's the nothing makes me happier than to see somebody achieve something that I've never been able to achieve uh, uh, at this point, you know, mm -hmm. with with what we, you know, with with how we fish and all that, you know, take it to the next level. And we all learn from each other. Um, you know, it's I grew up wrestling and you're only as good as your as your training partner. Mm -hmm. If you're not pushing each other to excellence, then you're going to be mediocre. Mm -hmm. And and there's a big there's a big separation there of, of being surrounded by people that want to constantly lift you up instead of tear you down. You know, it, it seems to be an industry that uh, for the most part, what I see the young guys going fighting against is that mentality of, I want you to do really good. Just not as good as me. Right. You know, just almost, but not as good as me. And, and I hate that. I, I, I don't, I don't like that. I want to see you succeed far past anything that I could have ever thought of. Um, and so I think it's a little bit difference of guides. You know, people are going to go find a guide to fish that area. You and I both know it. Right. Um, I think it's, I think it's, you know, partly our job to, to give them an opportunity to a guide that's going to take very good care of them. You know, instead of, you know, uh, instead of just hiring a guy that, that takes your money because it's easy to take, you know, the, right. there's, there's a different, le there's different levels of guides, you know, absolutely. Um, and so I, I take it very personal. I want you in good hands. Um, and by good, I mean, safe, you know, safety is that most concern. Um, we had some instances, we had one instance this year, a boat was taken on water, told my guys to reel up and, you know, it wasn't a question. It was reel that up, throw it on the deck. We're following that boat in, uh, you know, that water's 40 degrees. It's snowing, you know, nice. and, um, <laughs> I called, I called Nate said, Hey, here's a boat headed your way. And, you know, I didn't have to explain to him what needed to happen past that. Right. That boat's, that boat's taken on water, hang up the phone. He tells his guys, reel them up. We're going to make sure that boat makes it. Okay. You know, it's, that's who we're, that's who we're back as guys. I don't have to have a conversation of the second I told him that boat was taken on water. I knew what he was going to do, right. you know? And, and so, you know, that's, we want to make sure everybody has a safe trip out there. You know, I mean, the fishing is, they're, they're going to come or they're not, you know, it's, 
is having that safe trip of, you know, somebody not putting you in harm's way just because of a fish. Yeah. You know, the, the, a lot of people don't agree, you know, but fishing, believe it or not, the catching part is the very last rung on the ladder. Right. I mean, that's like, <laughs> that's like you're there for that. Right. But there's so many other pieces, there's so many other rungs on the ladder that, you know, if you, if you make it through your day and you climb all the way to the top and, and you get some fish, you know, on that top rung, then, then it was a great day, but you take out any of those other, other parts of your day. Um, it doesn't matter if you caught fish or not. No. So one of the, I say this all the time, one of my greatest mentors, uh, one of my greatest friends, um, uh, uh, Jim Biddle, the owner of Willie Boats. When I very first started, he said, if you think success is that gill bag, quit now. Right. And it was, it was literally the best advice that I got early on in my career, right off the bat was it's, you have to catch fish. I mean, we're, we're guides, you know, but I love it when we get to the boat ramp or, or after the end of the day. And the first story that they start reminiscing is not about the fish that I'm going to go clean. Right, right. It's about the experience that they had that day. That's when I know that I did my job uh, and it makes me feel really good. You know, it's not the size of the tip or anything else. It's it's those things right there of, all right, I impacted their life in a positive manner. And the, and, and um, that memory is far worth so much more than killing a fish or, or mm -hmm. anything else. You know, nobody talks about how good a, how good a kokanee that, you know, that they caught. You know, they talk about those memories that they shared together. Right. Well, if you can, you know, kind of a gauge for success on – the non fish catching part of the, of the business is if you can get a person that sat in your boat with you all day and shared time with you or your, their family or friends or whoever, and didn't catch a fish, but book a trip on the way out of the boat for next yeah. year or for a different season that you have, then, you know, right there that, you know, you, you did your job, right? Right. You, you didn't catch fish. Sometimes you can't control that, but to get clients back, you know, time and time again, um, you know, that have had, you know, varying experiences, it, they know, you know, that they're buying you, right? They're buying Absolutely. They're paying you to spend time with you. <laughs> right. And if that time isn't good for them, then they won't come back. But if just the time that you spend with them is good, hey, that's the that's the beginning of, of, of a great relationship. Absolutely. Well, and I, what kind of what kind of things are you guys doing to kind of engage and entertain people, especially if fishing's on the slower side? Well, I mean, you got to be. Everybody's different, right? Everybody in the boat is different. So, I think I think being able to read people is a is a big big deal. Um, and it's it's important to stay true to your own personality. And it's really easy to get, get sucked into, say, a, a tough day where people start turning, you know, to the look to the, the front of the boat in their seat or falling asleep or, you know, making, you know, gestures, you know, sighs and stuff like that. Um, you really got to be able to, to shed a lot of that stuff and somehow reach down real deep and you know change something right distractions diversions i you know i have this thing where you know if, if it starts getting really quiet if people start getting tired you know the fishing's tough then i just i'd start telling random stupid stories you know just things that that i experienced in the past you know that were funny <laughs> to me and hoping maybe that it, you know it, it it gets her attention and takes her mind off the fact that we haven't caught a fish in five hours, you know? Absolutely. <laughs> I tell him, I said, I'm the village idiot. And then I only say that because nobody expects much out of the village idiot. Uh, that yeah. is me. Um, you know, I mean, it, and I make jokes, you know, I mean, you know, to, I get a bit quirky. Um, I tell, you know, I, I'm such a bad worker. I had, I had to figure out how to get people to pay me to screw off. So here we are. This is what we're doing. We're screwing <laughs> off. Um, yeah. But definitely reading, you can see it coming before it gets there. Yeah. You know, about the time that I start seeing you not actively fishing no more, kind of sitting back away from me, 
um, before you do this, I've already re-engaged with you, made you laugh, um, and just, you know, reminded you, uh, and I say this all the time as well, is, is living in the moment. Look where we are. Look what we get to do. Yeah. You know, I mean, how glorious is that? And then, uh, you know, definitely it's that engagement. It's, the, you know, just that little bit of you matter today. Yeah. You know, it's a lot like a little kid or you sit down and say, hey, how was your day? It was good. No, what did you do today? You know, get them, pull it out of them and pull them out of their comfort zone enough. You know, maybe they're a um, little bit too shy. And so, you know, pull them out of that comfort zone a little bit to know that they're in a safe place. And and definitely it's, it's that personal connection. Um, yeah. This is me. You know, we're working really hard. You know, this is what we're doing. Uh, but make it, you know, fun and engaging. You know, that's what I think, you know, for me personally, that's what people want is they just want to be engaged and, and know that they that they exist and they matter, mm -hmm. you know, no matter their skill level. Um, that's the big part. You know, I don't I don't yell in my book. I don't mm -hmm. I don't like people to yell in my book. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the when somebody hooks a fish, I've seen I've seen husbands get on their wives, friends, get on other friends and they're like, do this, do that. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> this is not how we act. You know, I mean, because you, you're already when you when you hook up, you're already afraid of losing that fish. And then somebody's yelling at you, chirping at you. You're going to make another mistake. And that is not what we do. You know, well, he lost it. Yeah, I lose fish. I'm a full time fishing guy and I lose fish. Yeah, and so happens. what what makes you think that you're not going to? It's going to happen. But we're going to get the next one. You know, definitely, definitely that that personal connection. Absolutely. Yeah, For me, making, making somebody feel bad about feeling bad is, is like, yeah. is the worst. Right. So oh. they're, they're on a fish and they lose it. And you know, you, you, you hammer them for it. It's, that's just like, that's probably the worst thing that you can possibly do um, in, in my mind. And so they, like you said, you lose a fish, you lose a fish. It's just a fish. Bro. I'm not mad. I don't care. It was your fish. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was. I mean, it wasn't, you know, I mean, uh, a lot of guys, I, I just had a guy on the boat seven years, seven years. It took him to get back on a guided trip after he got yelled at on a hook set. Right. Right. Yeah. Seven years. This guy did not hire another guy because he thought that's how all guides talk to their guests. Right. And it's like, no, man, it, it's, it's not that, you know? And so, I mean, one bad experience will cost you, you know, they remember that stuff. You know, they remember the the little things of, you know, the um, up there, you know, we fight weather really bad up, up on Odell where we fish. And so, you know, about nine o'clock, I know the coffee shops open at the resort. And so if I see everybody a little bit cold, a little bit uncomfortable, hey, let's really ease up. I'll buy you a cup of coffee. We'll go in, stand by the campfire and let the group re kind of connect and get get a different mind mindset. And then we'll go ahead and again. You know, it's, it's definitely playing into the, the experience. You know, I, we sell an experience. I don't sell fish. Uh, right. We catch a lot of big fish, which is great, but we sell an experience. It's, it's an adventure when you go out with us. Yeah. If fishing is your priority, if it's your number one, or catching fish is your number one priority for your day or number one goal, um, then buy fish on the way to your fishing trip. And Absolutely. <laughs> spend the rest of your, your time with me, you know, enjoying your day on the water, whatever. Um, yep. if we get fish, awesome. That's, that's great. You know, but don't, you know, one of the, the things that I, I dislike more than anything is when a client makes reference to the amount of money they paid you to catch a fish and how expensive that fish was. Yeah. Right. It's, it's a very, very, you know, high price to pay, per pound for fish to, yep. you know, to, to buy a guide for a day. Um, you're better off just buying it somewhere else and then going out and enjoying the day on the, on the river. And if you catch some more fish, great. But um, yeah, that's, that's, that's a tough one. That's I that one. Um, I take it as a challenge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is. It's the, cause I'll tell them right up. I'll tell them right up front. I don't know how you think I afford this boat and all the gear in it. It's expensive. Uh, and this is how we pay for it is it it's expensive. Right. Um, but in saying that the, what did, you know, I mean, what are your expectations of today? 
you know, I, I, I throw it right back in their corner. I'm um, not overly aggressive, but I, I mean, let's have a conversation about it. If that's how you feel, by all means, let's talk about it and come up with a solution. What is it? What, what is this? What is success for you today? Cause I'll do that. But in doing that, you're going to expect excellence out of me. And so now I'm going to expect excellence out of you. And so if, if I can't get excellence out of you, that's on you. It's not on me. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the, we have a, we have a deep conversation after that point. I don't let them off the hook that easy as, <laughs> you know, I don't, um, but it's, it's, I have a unique way of delivering that information in a way to where you're not going to take it aggressively or, or um, look at it as a threat. Right. But it's, you know, when I say cast over there and hit that five gallon bucket, what are we doing here? If you want fish, you have to hit that. And then, and then they see that they can't quite do what it takes. And they're like, and I've seen it firsthand and not everybody, Jeff, by all means, not everybody, but they start to understand of, all right, I'm putting you where the fish are. We have what they want but you have to be willing to do your part. If you can't, that's on you. It's not on me. And so, you know, I mean, but I have a real conversation with them um, because I get a handful of guys that, you know, this is the most expensive price per pound. Like, dude, really? I don't know how much you're paying for gas, but I pay a lot. And so what's that got to do with the price eggs of China? Um, But no, I have a conversation with them. I don't shy away from it. It is expensive. Hands yeah. down. But what, are, but what are you buying? Did you, because I mean, because I'll tell them what, just like you is, did you buy fish? You could have bought a lot more fish had you stopped at the store. Yeah. Yeah. How are you guys kind of selling that experience rather than the, this is just a trip to come out and catch fish. You know, you look on Facebook and everybody's kind of posting their catch at the end of the day saying, book with me, come catch these fish. You know, you guys kind of sell that experience a little bit more so than just come out and catch fish. Uh, so, like, what are you guys doing different than the typical guy to kind of sell that experience to people? Well, you know, I, I think one of the, you know, this goes back to, you know, having having three other guides that that we work with. Um, we we offer a lot of different things, right? And some of them are at the same time of the year, so. One of one of the, the things that's really, I guess, kind of kind of helped me out a lot is I can be more than one place on the same day. Right. So social media, you know, we all know social media plays a role in, in, in all of this for businesses now. And um, when people go look at social media and they see, you know, that we want salmon fishing today or they see that, you know, we want salmon fishing and fish Shasta Lake, or we want, uh, you know, striper fishing and then wild rainbow trout fishing in the same day. Um, you can, that's what, you know, variety is a big deal for people. And, and that's kind of important to be able to offer. And it's one of the things that makes it us unique in a sense that we can fish 365 days a year. You know, people say, well, you know, what do you do this time of year? Whatever we want right? Um, unless it's closed. And a lot are, are the salmon season closes, but that's about it. Nothing else closes. Every, every day of the year, we have something to offer somebody. And so that's, that's something that, that I think attracts a lot of people is the fact that, hey, you know what, we can go, you know, fishing on Shasta Lake and, and catch a bunch of fish. Um, trophy fish, you know, or just cookie cutters or whatever. And then while you're on the boat, you have another boat working in town, catching wild rainbow trout, or, you know, in the spring, we have a guy down fishing stripers. And so we all do it. We're all selling other venues during our day on the water with our clients. And it's not necessarily, you know, this far off in the distant future kind of a, of an opportunity, um, we're just always able to offer something and more than one thing, generally speaking. And that's a, that's a big attractor. People really seem to gravitate towards that. And many of our clients, some of them just like to fish one, one venue, but a lot of our clients fish them all. Right. So that's a, 
that's been a really big deal. And that's, it's one of the things that, that because of, you know, the way we're, we're set up, we can offer things that a lot of other businesses can't. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we don't have that luck. I mean, somewhat we have that luxury, but not really. Um, for me, it's when, you know, I talk to you on the phone, you know, it's a personal connection of, um, I sell reality. I don't take your money because it's easy to take. Uh, the only information I have is what we've been catching, you know, all three of us, what we've been catching, you know, up to this point, if it's worth it to you, you know, I mean, I've canceled steelhead trips, salmon trips. Um, I cancel a lot of lake trout trips. People want to do it in the summer. And mm -hmm. I flat out tell them, I do not want to take your money for this because I, I'm not sure I can deliver. Right. You know, the, the other time when we're there, that's what I know. I, I have the utmost confidence I can deliver, you know, one over 20 pounds in a day, you know, pretty consistently. Um, it's just the honesty of, you know, your expectations of, you know, if you're looking to just catch a hundred fish, I'm not taking you in the river on the drift boat. I'm not doing it. I'm going to run you in my power boat up to Lost Creek and we're going to go bass fishing and trout fishing. You're going to catch a couple hundred. Um, and so, you know, I, I talked to them with on the phone, what are your expectations? And then I, I booked a trip for their expectations, mm -hmm. you know, right now, this is the salmon we're catching or sealhead we're catching. And so if it's worth it to you, by all means, we'll do it, but I'm not going to sell you, you know, I mean, uh, this year is a unique year. We've had more steelhead to the hatchery than we've had in 30 years. Um, every day you're going to get two opportunities for steelhead. You know, it's, I don't, you know, it's just, it is what it is. Um, we're, you know, we're fishing bug and bubble. And so is it worth it to you? You know, but I'm not going to sell you, you know, everybody hears what those numbers are and they're like, oh, I got to get still at fishing right now. Like, oh, we're going to pump the brakes a little bit, you know? Um, oh, yeah. yeah. It's that, that honesty, you know, not, and, but it's hard, you know, I mean, look back when you first started, you know, um, did you take trips when you're like, man, I hope it really pans out right, you know, tomorrow, because I mean, you know, we're just starting out and um, it's all stuff that we learned and, and, you know, it changes as you progress through your career, I think, you know, absolutely. Um, but I mean, you know, I, I said this last podcast, I never understood how much stress there was sitting in the seat that I sit in now. Until that first fish hits the boat, you know, I mean, you would never know it by hearing what I, what I say, but I, dude, my nuts, my, my guts are not the, I mean, it's, I'm penned up, I mean, just stressed <laughs> to the max until that first fish hits the boat. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't care if it's a trout, yeah. bass, salmon, steelhead, it doesn't matter what I'm fishing for. Till that first one hits the boat, you know, you just got so much self-doubt. You know, I've done all the prep, I, you know, I mean. I mean, I double check everything, but I mean, it's just nervous. I mean, you know, still to this day, I just, my, my guts are in knots. Well, it's, it's one of those jobs that's, it's very, you know, it's very humbling, I guess, in, in many ways, because you can have, you can have a hot streak and you can just be on fire. And then all of a sudden it starts going to your head a little bit. And as soon as it does, you know, boy. Higher power that dose of reality is freaking blank. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a tough one. That dose of reality hits you right in the mouth, and you're like, ah. and it, <laughs> and it, but it happens. You know, we fish enough to where it, it's going to happen. Oh, um, totally, totally, and it's good. It's good though. I mean, when you're you're talking about that, um, you know, your communication with clients and stuff like that, and you know, we've we've kind of come into a kind of a an environment where the guides don't talk to the clients, right? Our office manager, my wife, she, she talks to everybody. And so we don't really, unless, unless we find ourselves in a situation like we have this year where salmon fishing has been really, really extra tough. Um, she'll make some calls. We'll make some calls to the guys, but you know, I don't really, I, I rarely talk to clients anymore before I see them the day of the trip and none of the other guides do really either. And one of the, the things that makes that, that tough, you know, and you're, this comes from what you were just talking about, about delivering, you know, reports and, Hey, this is how it's, it's, it's been. And this, what are your expectations? Well, in, in a lot of our venues, we're booking trips 
six, eight months ahead of time. Yeah. No, yeah. And so exactly. we're booking those on last season's, you know, schedule. We're booking them on historical, you know, timing for runs. And that makes it that's brutal because you have to you have to take those calls. You have to, to book those people for the venues with um you know everything that you can, all the information that you have available, but I'm finding more and more that with changing environments and and run sizes and you know all the all the forces that have you know been to our detriment in, in recent years, it makes it really, really tough when those seasons do approach. And you know, we tell next week's group, you know, we got a full moon, we got high tides. The water cooled down. We're going to get fish. We have to get fish. There's no reason why we shouldn't get fish. Well, dang it. We didn't get any fish. We didn't get any fish. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah, the lake trout season up there, those are booked a year out. And, you know, and the only information we have is, is the previous year because um, I get guys who are like, hey, when's it open? And I'm like, first trip up, you know, first trip with us, I am not booking you on the opener because mm-hmm. – it's either gangbusters or it is not. <laughs> and so I tell, you know, but I'm honest with, I tell them, you know, that, that it can be epic, you know, without a doubt. Cause it, it doesn't, you know, it's shut down from April, October 31st, to April 22nd. I said, but your first year out, let's go to where there's more consistent numbers, push you off farther into the season to where you're You're going to see what the lake has to offer. And then if you want to roll it, I mean, because you're kind of rolling a dice at that open. Right. I mean, it's it can be if the lake turned over, if it didn't, if it somewhat turned, you know, I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into that being epic or not. But once you're there and see what the lake has to offer, they're like, yeah, absolutely, let's roll the dice. You're like, well, you know, later in June, you could have hooked 40, and we hooked four. You know, yeah. I mean, but you have to know what the fishery has to offer before um, – before I'll let you get it, you know, I mean, unless you're just adamant on, nope, I want the opener to I'm like, all right. But, yeah. you know, I mean, it's, this is what you're in for. It's either going to be super awesome or gonna, we're going to be drinking coffee at nine o'clock in the morning because it's going to be that weather that bad. Right. You know, so. Well, and it's another thing I've kind of learned in, in recent years, too, is that I think I've been, I've had more disappointed people um, because of cancellations than I have had disappointed people that actually came out and just grounded out and fished. And so I'm really cautious about that now. Um, when people call up, they book their trip, they look forward to these trips and, and you don't know for sure, you know, what it was that they were trying to achieve. Um, you know, but I've had stuff happen like, you know, not, not even necessarily way in advance, but people will call to take their dad on his last trip. Yeah. Right? Cause he's in hospice or, you know, he's disabled now. And um, you really have to be careful with that because, you know, you could, you could shut down somebody's plan and have it negatively affect your day way more so than it would if you would just taken them out and had a tough day on the water. Um, At least they would have got to spend their last day on the water with dad, you know, or whatever. So. Absolutely. It's the, uh, that's where the boats, you know, now, you know, Nate, Nate has a cabin boat that was the first cabin boat that we've had up there. Um, That's opened the door to so much more. I mean, because in our open sleds, you're, you're out in the elements. I mean, it is, you know, I mean, it's, it can be brutal. And so now that we have Nate with his cabin up there, um, it opens the door to where just what, like you said, Hey, we're going to go out, we're going to work our, our tail off to get you that one fish that you can have a picture with your dad or your mom before, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, um, there was one, uh, it, it's still, you know, one of Alex's, um, sponsors, um, uh, brought a guy that was, uh, it was his last fishing trip that he was able to go on. And it was, and it was just happened to be the most epic day of fishing. I got pictures on my phone of a triple, um, mm-hmm. You know, the, it just makes you, it just makes you realize uh, how important it is to be in the moment. And, you know, it's another thing that I say all the time, you know, my guests today, um, they said, how do you keep the passion? 
And I said, this morning when I seen you taking pictures with your phone, I get, I get to do this whenever I want the, you know, the, it is, you know, I, I try not to get complacent, but I do. I said, it's when I see my guests taking pictures because it's that awesome reminds me of just how fortunate and blessed that I am, you know, because I forget about it sometimes, I, you know, because I'm focusing on other things or, or, or that. But when I see people taking pictures of a riffle that I flip, put my drift boat through, how many times, you know, they're like, this is awesome. Like, and then it, I, I find myself reflecting back and remembering that passion that it is awesome. And I'm very blessed, you know? Yeah. And so, I mean, yeah, it is awesome that we get to do what we do. Absolutely. Um, but you said that you, you don't talk to your, you know, a lot of times you got, you don't get to talk to your clients. How, how many years ago was that where you gave the reins away to somebody else to book those trips? Cause I, you know, I still book all my, all my own trips. Um, I imagine it would be really hard for me to trust somebody else. Um, what was that? What was that transition like? Uh, well, cause I'm not there. Because, yet. I'm not there yet, and, yeah. but I want to get there. And that's, that's just like having the guides that, that, you know, fish with you. Um, you know, you understand the value of their character and, and their personalities and all that stuff. Well, the person who's answering the phone, right, has to match that as well. So um, I'm, I'm lucky because, you know, my wife does, she runs the office, right? And she's better at it than I was. She's better at, at, at collecting deposits. She's better at, at keeping things the way that things need to be kept, you know, and our rates, you know, our, our minimum number of anglers, stuff that is really, really hard for, for guides a lot of times to, to adhere to. Um, she's great with that. Um, anything that happens on the, on the backside of the day, she can deal with. Um, we're not, we're not answering our phones when we're on the water. And no. that's a, that's a big deal. Um, but yeah, I can, I can see where it, there has to be some kind of personal connection. There has to be somebody that has a vested interest in, you know, the success of, of the group. And um, if you don't have that, then it would be really difficult to let, let go of the reins um, unless you could find somebody that indeed had the same passion for your business as you do. So right. That's, that's where I, I mean, my wife career changed to to do this, so right. there had to be, you know, there had to be enough there um, interest to um, take on everything that it, it encompasses. Oh, absolutely! But it's a huge deal. I mean, it's when you, you know, I take the time off I need to take. I don't fish three hundred days a year. I don't no. I'd never be that guy, um, but. Having having you know Jenny there to to take care of everything gives me the opportunity to not be frustrated with a client before I even see him because <laughs> that yeah. happens, right? Oh, well, it does. Um, it does. It's the um, I like the phone call of call me when it's good. Right. No, I'm not. It right. literally is because I'll tell you how it goes. It's it can, it can be gangbusters every day. For a week straight before that day, <laughs> and then that day gets there, and you're like, "It's that day," yeah. and you're yeah. like, "Well, you, yeah. you said it was going to be good. Now it's not good. So now I'm mad. I'm like, so I don't do it. No. Um, it's it's just too it's too risky, you know. Um, the uh, we we got some prospects in line, you know, because that's that is where I want to go. As you know, I'm. It's one of the places where I'm bottlenecked that, you know, I can't be everywhere, you know, because I don't answer my phone on the river or on the water either. It's mm -hmm. if you hire me, you hired me. It's not fair for me to direct my attention to somebody else that hasn't hired me. That's unfair to you. Uh, that's how I personally I will. You know, the guides will talk to each other. You know, like mm -hmm. if Nate or Alex calls me, we answer those phone calls because it's a. Uh, Hey, they're at this depth or they're over here. You know, there's, it's, it's about work. It's not just, you know, Hey, I'm thinking about booking a trip. Um, 
but then, you know, there are times when, you know, I have some of the guests, I'm like, Hey, you guys mind if I take this, you know, I mean, I'm very blessed to have guests that have fished with me a number of years up on the lake. Um, they literally don't need me in the boat other than to start it, get them out to the fishing grounds. They read the electronics same way I do those guys. They just go right to fishing. Um, and so, you know, they're a little bit, but I know my, I know my crowd, you know, Hey, do you mind if I take this phone call, you know, but I always make sure to ask, you know, to make, you know, because they, they're paying you. And so, yeah, I don't like that. You no know, texting or calling on the phone. Why, why you're working. That's to me, it's unacceptable. You know, it's it's not fair. Yeah, from a from a business standpoint, with you know, this ties into having having our hands free to to do what we do, do what we're good at, and then you know, allowing you know our clients to to have contact, to have access to our business. Um, and when I'm on the water, I'm out of service or whatever. During those times, um, I I came to realize that you know over the years. That I, I missed out on a lot of business, um, and that's where that's where that the the office thing comes in into to play. It's that's where it becomes super important because you don't realize, right, how many people call um, with today's technology. Oh, if you don't answer, they, they got five other stuff. guys on the phone, exactly right there in front of them. Yep. So that's one of the things that we did to, to help capture a lot more business too, was that we, we answered everybody either through email, through text, through a return phone call. Um, and a lot of people that would have just gone somewhere else, we, we sold them, right? We sold them what they were, they were looking to buy and it didn't have to go somewhere else. And then we want other guys to be you know prosperous too. And we don't want, the whole industry, we just want our little piece. Absolutely. Um, and, and one of the ways that we, you know, maintain that is by being accessible pretty much, you know, during business hours every day of, of the week. So that's that's where when you're people thinking about expanding or people are thinking about growing their business, um, well, you can you could probably, uh, you know, keep one guide schedule, you know, at least – at least 50% more full if you answered your phone all the time, right? Yep. And that's, yep. that's where a lot of guides, you know, kind of kind of fall behind is, is they're not as available. Um, and people nowadays are very impatient. They, they want to call oh, no. and a trip, right? Absolutely. So, and then and, and one of the other things that I do is, is I make notes. Every day, you know, if, if, if you come and spend a day with me, um, I know what we talked about. You know, I know, you know, you in some some story somewhere you say, well, I like uh, Reese's peanut butter cups. I make notes of everything in my in my book. The next time you're on my boat, I'll guarantee you there's Reese's peanut butter cups in my boat. Right. Um, you know, just it's just those little stuff, those little things that people really appreciate of you were paying attention. You know, the you send, you know, all my emails go to Stephen and then they come to me. Um, I've already put you in my contacts because you're not going to answer. When I call you to book the trip, you're not going to answer your phone. It's the, because you think I'm a car warranty right, person. Right, right. And so I know you're going to call me back, but I already have your contact info on my phone. So when I answer the phone, I, I address you by name and it throws everybody off. They're like, what? I've, I've already, you know, just those little things. It shows them that you do care that, you know, that, that you go beyond the, just the normal of what everybody else does. I, you know, that's, that's one of my, I, I would say that's one of my biggest keys to success is, is fine tuning those little things, you yeah, know, with, no, with my guests. Yeah. And I, we've lost some of that, you know, because we don't talk to, to very many. Right. People. Right. And, and so, you know, a, a guy should be aware of stuff like that. Absolutely. And, um, that's but it. how do you, but like you were saying, how do you scale to your level of success and still maintain that personal, um, yeah, it, that it, little bit of a personal touch, you know, it would be really hard. You know, you employ, you know, a lot of days on the water, you know, a lot yeah. more than I do. Yeah. And so, you know, I mean, that's what, you know, me and Steven rack our heads about is, you know, how do we, how do we maintain that standard? But, scale it up 
you know, the, and, you know, I mean, I don't know. It's this, the ongoing debate between us is how do we do this? Yeah. And that's, you know, one of the things that, that kind of, you know, evolved for us. And then, you know, I talk about not talking to the clients, but I, in the beginning it was tough because everyone wanted to talk to me. Yeah. Well, yeah. well when can I talk to Jeff? Or right. I want to email Jeff. I have questions. I don't want to talk to you. You know, I want to talk to, to Jeff now, just like everything in life, right. Our clients have established a, a, an administrative relationship with Janie. Right. Right. And then we establish our relationship on the water. So as long as you have that, people look forward to calling her to, to book their trip because it's so easy. She knows exactly what needs to be done. But, she already has their info a lot of times. And it's just, it's kind of a seamless experience for them. And then when they know what to expect when they get to the boat launch, you know, because she sends out confirmation letters and this is when you need to show up. This is what your remaining balance is. I mean, all those things. And so where we lose that kind of a, I don't know, a, special hands-on touch between the guide and the client. Um, we, we make up for it with having what we have, you know, in the office and that, that conversation and those communications are, you know, you unique in their own. And Absolutely. Get, they, they've already made the personal connection with her. Yep. And yep. so they trust her to get the job done to, you know, that's what, yeah, that's that's what it would take right there is have somebody that, that can make that personal connection to handle any anything that comes comes down the the, the path, you know, good or bad. Yeah. You know, schedules, I mean, this week. Yeah, schedules are all right there. You know, so you're not having that. Well, you know, can I call you later? I don't have my calendar in front of me. And, you know, those those kinds of things, you know, are, are acceptable, but they're kind of blips, you know, on your. You know, a lot of the stuff is salesmanship, right? I mean, right. You're, you're trying to land these clients and um, in, in, in many ways. And that's where that's where that first line of communication, that first, hey, you know, this is, you know, Jeff Goodwin, you know, guide services. And this is what we have to offer. And, oh, you want to fish for that? Well, let's, you know, in, in where we don't really have the time and the energy to answer 30 emails, right? If you have someone in the office that can, right. they can, they can, you know, shape that, that trip or, or that experience for that person um, based on all the conversations and stuff like that. And just see, being able to go back, you know, and because you get, you run 600 trips in a year and how many get rescheduled, how many get canceled, how many get put into next year, how many, it, it's impossible for one guy to stay on top of all of that stuff, you know, if he's trying to fish and do the, do the office work. So, yeah. That's, that's where I'm sitting now is just, that's where I'm bald is mm -hmm. I have to, we got everybody in position now. It's just, I'm lacking that, you know, that's where it still takes me to be sitting here answering the phone, doing all that stuff. Um, but I enjoy it. You know, I, I enjoy, I enjoy that conversation as much as I enjoy fishing, you know, mm -hmm. the, that I enjoy that interaction. And so, um, it definitely opens my eyes to a different way of, I have to be willing to let go a little bit of that, that control. Uh, and, and, and I don't know if control is the right word, but you know, the, the security of it, of, you know, I know it got done at, in the same manner of, you know, how I would have done it, yeah. you know, and then how do you model that? Yeah. Well, so yeah, it, it can be found, I think. And, um, you know, there's, there's ways to, you know, I mean, Janie doesn't work for free. Right. So there's, there's ways to structure all that stuff too. So it, it, it's a very worthwhile venture for somebody, right? It's enough right. so that they'll put their best into it as well. And right. because when those guys go out for the day and there's four, four trips with, you know, four, five, six people in the boat and each one of those seats is a commission, that person's going to make sure everything 
is just perfect, you know, before that trip happens because their their pay for that day depends on it. Right. So it's it's um you can set it up to make it, you know, really, really beneficial for somebody to really be on top of it. Um so, so what you're saying is is gonna cost me more money to make more money. Yes and no. Yeah. <laughs> yes and no. You know? I mean, because that's what we're that's what we're fighting now is uh um, you know, me and Steven, I was fortunate enough to meet Steven a number of years ago, uh, when he was still guiding on the river and, uh, you know, where he's taken my company when we, when, when we decide to move forward, you know, as a three years ago, you, you just posted that, uh, on Facebook. It was three years when, you know, people don't realize it was a year and a half or two years in, in the making, you know, when we first talked about doing what we did. And then three years ago, we we pulled the trigger, made it happen. Um, and everybody's like, well, it's a lot of money. Yeah, but not really. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, in, in the whole scheme of things, uh, where he took my company, um, I couldn't have achieved. I had to let go, you know, but that was our talks of I'm at my ceiling. I've taken it as far as I could personally take it. You know, I, I like to think I'm a great guy, you know, fun to hang out with. Um, but I, I couldn't, I don't know the social, the social media stuff, the website stuff and where he's taking us now is literally the next level. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I think, well, how can I, how can we incorporate somebody else to get me, to get us to that next level above that? You know, I mean, that's what we're all searching for is, you know, like I said earlier, is to lift everybody up. I want to see my, I want to, you know, I want to see the people around me succeed. Um, I'm, I'm great because I surround myself with greatness. You know, that's the, that's the number one key is, you know, it's not the money in your hand at the end of the day. It's, you got to look at the whole year of, we invested this into the company and my wife works really hard. Um, and so, you know, she's not able to take, oh, you know, she does, she does her own thing uh, to where, you know, she's not going to, you know, book the trips and, and all that. But mm -hmm. it's, that's where we need to, to get to the next level beyond where we are, you know. Yeah, no, it's super important. I mean, that's, that is, in my opinion, it was one of the things that really put us to the next level too. Right. And I don't, like you just said, I don't think I could have done it on my own. I would have. You know what? I probably would have flamed out and I would have said, you know what? You guys are on your own. <laughs> you know, I got the business I need. That's all I can handle. And sorry, but I'll, I'll send, you know, calls to you or whatever, but I can't manage all of your schedules. I can't pay all of you guys. I can't do everything. That's because the other thing that that, that did is it really relieved me of some of those, those tasks and it enabled me to, put more time into the technical side of the business. Right. And with, you know, Steven's help and, and, you know, a lot of information that, that he sent my way and um, it just made it easier for me to concentrate on those particular things and let some of the other stuff go, um, but still win. Right. Um, well, and that's and, and that's one of the other things I wanted to bring up with you is the you have a ton of information out there. You know, you go into great detail on if if I wanted to go fish Shasta, I can get on your website, take my boat down there, and go fish. You mm -hmm. know, I don't have to hire you. The what was it? I'm I'm just like you are in that respect. As I will give you the I don't want you to have to hire me to go catch these fish. Right. I want you to hire me because I'm fun to hang out with and, and you want to be with me. Um, we get, not we, but, you know, in the industry, there's a lot of pushback of why would you give somebody that information for free? Um, you've been very successful uh, in doing exactly that. You know, I mean, like I said, I can go fish Shasta. I can go back through your, the, the articles you've written and pretty much go right to work. In, yeah. on that body of water. Yeah. Um, how do you get people to understand that 
there's more value in, in that information than there is non-value. I mean, because, you know, I mean, look, look how it's growing your business, just sharing that information. And then how do you navigate the, you're blowing up a fishery comment? Because that's the other thing that we, that we fight. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, you know, I don't have many friends in the guide industry. <laughs> so, <laughs> I get some keyboard warriors, you know, once in a while. Absolutely. But, yeah. Um, you know, it, it's honestly, it, it, it put me on the map, right? Okay. So, so here's one of my little, little secrets, right? Here's one of the things that, that I lucked into, right? It didn't come from any experience. It didn't come from any, you know, back knowledge. It came from um, just kind of realizing that I was nobody in, in the guide world over here. And there are, there are certain venues that, you know, guides have been fishing forever, right? 20, 30, 40 years. So I thought, well, how am I going to break into a market where there's 50 guides that have been here most of their lives on this fishery? And then how am I even going to touch the guys that are high volume, that are that have had websites for 30 years, you know, and they they rank high? And how do I how do I even get in, right? With so much competition in front of me. And it kind of happened by mistake, but I created my own legacy, right? So I decided I couldn't, I couldn't compete on, on the Sacramento River at the time. I was never going to break through and turn into this, you know, this legend on the river. It wasn't going to happen. There's already too many, right? So what do I do? Well, I, I put time and effort into something that nobody cared about, right? I put time and effort into an area that nobody spent any time on. Nobody really knew that much about. And honestly, it was it was Shasta, right? So there's a couple guides that worked Shasta, but they didn't write about it. They didn't do much at all with it. So early on, I started finding success and I started to share it. And people were like, wait a second, those are, Shasta has browns in it? Or Shasta has big rainbows? Or Shasta has salmon? And all of a sudden people started getting real interested in, in the potential for them to be able to go to Shasta and catch some, some fish, either with me or you know, maybe on their own. Then when I started learning more and more and more, I started to share some of that information. Um, and I think, you know, I didn't know it was going to do what it did, but people became very appreciative. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden I was, I was human to all of the people out there that watched that, that read articles, that, that watched videos, that did anything. And at the end of the day, when people are looking for a guide, um, it's my belief that if they, they believe that they're going to learn something, when they're out there fishing with that guide, any of the people that want to, to learn how to fish a body of water are going to call you. They're not going to call anybody else because it's too much of a risk that they're going to go out and maybe they, they'll they learn a few things. But guides are notorious for being quiet, right? And, and keeping their, their you know, information, you know, close to their, to their heart. And I've never – I. I'm not really that way. Right. I I kind of look past all that and I think, you know what, this is an industry. This is a sport. This is something that, you know, um, is important to so many people. It's primal, right. There's something about fishing that, that lures people. Um, and their thirst for knowledge is something that you can capitalize on. And, you know, for a couple of years, I had client after client, after client, after client book and Shasta just, for the, the purpose of learning a little bit more about how to troll for trout or how to catch salmon. And what people don't understand is, you know, on, on that body of water, I don't, I'll see them out there. I, I turned all of, all of the people that, that were interested in doing so into resources. Right. And all of them helped me out throughout the year. And I always know somebody who's on Shasta fishing 
And if I haven't been out there for a couple of weeks, I can call them. I've given them information. They're going to give me information, yep. right? So from a business standpoint, whether you believe it or not, sharing good information with people goes way further than, than you would ever imagine, right? For the crowd, I, for people listening. I, I would I would agree. It's I I liken it to it's the first pillar of the bridge of trust. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's the if I'm willing to, I think it screams confidence. If I'm willing to give you all the information about my fishery, I'm confident enough to know that, you know, the, we're all going to have success out there. And once they, once they know that you want them to have success, then, you know, you hear the conversation of, well, you're a great guy. You know, the, you know, through all the keyboard warriors and, and the hate mail that you get, um, the, the people that have had enough courage and respect to come talk to me on the dock and not take what the, the, what they perceived me to be online of ruining their fishery that they've been fishing for 50 years, had it all to themselves, their locals, there, all the same things that you hear. Mm -hmm. Um, They walk away shaking my hand and saying, I'm glad I had, I'm glad I came down and talked to you because it changed my mind. Thank you. Yeah. You know, the, um, because we're not trying to blow up a fishery, but I want people to go that town, that town needs people like us going, you know, Odell is in the middle of nowhere on highway 58, Mm -hmm. you know, those small businesses, you know, how much money we bring to that local community. And that's one of the things that I tell them, what are you doing to boost the local economy? I'm bringing a hundred, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars here a year. You know, the people work here because of the guests that we bring to that area. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, there is value to it. You know, as, as far as the fishery, come talk to me at the dock. I'll talk fishing. You know, you've you've caught a couple 20 pounders in 40 years. We're going to do it four times today. You know, the and it's you just got to get out of your own way and, and know that that somebody can teach you something. You know, mm-hmm. the um but a lot of it is just that, like I said, they're like, you're going to ruin a fisher. Well, if people are using the resource, how is that ruining a fisher? You know, I don't, I don't like that argument because it's not, it's not ruining a fishery. People are out enjoying the resource, you know, having a good time with their family, making memories. How is that ruin, ruining a fishery? Because there's more people there. Well, there's more people on the planet now than what there was. So you have to uh, assume a little bit of that, right? Well, and there's a, people talk about ruining fisheries. Oh, you're going to fish them out, this and that. Well, a little story about Shasta. Um, Shasta didn't get a lot of exposure, right? It was known for as being a bass lake, right? Everyone wanted to bass fish. They had bass yep. tournaments. They had all those couple of kokanee power tournaments every year. But um, people didn't realize that there was as many fish in Shasta as there are. The quality fish, they didn't realize that there were quality fish. And believe it or not, Fish and Wildlife, um, you know, our, our state projects, fish projects, they they don't know how many fish are in the lake. Right. right? They just have a schedule. They raise them, they dump them in there, and they don't care if they live or die, right? So what happened was um, with Shasta, and this kind, of, this kind of helps that argument about, you know, us hurting the fishery, um, region one in California was slated for a ban of planting non-native species such as brook trout and brown trout in, in the lakes, right? So oh. there was a big push by conservationists, you know, whoever, I don't know who, who did, but the state got sued for planting non-native fish in region one. And so they were going to kill the brown trout programs and the brook trout programs. And the brook trout programs, from what I understand, did get get the axe. But for a year before that, probably one of the, the, the first big years that I had on Shasta, I was posting all these pictures of these great big browns that <laughs> people didn't realize that were even in the lake, including fish and wildlife. Right. right? So fortunately, one of their biologists was 
you know, savvy to this. And, and he kept sharing all of these to his managers and to, to the people that he worked for. And all of a sudden, hey, wow, we can't, this is a phenomenal resource. These things are doing great here. Well, we can't kill this program. And it not only did they not kill the program, I can't even tell you how many hundreds of thousands of browns they've planted in that lake since I first started fishing it and catching those big fish. So right. that's a great argument for you know a lot of a lot of folks. You have to make these fisheries visible or they don't exist. And that includes fish and wildlife in, in many ways. Absolutely. So yeah, it's 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 hundred percent beneficial in my mind, and yeah, you know, you may wait a little bit longer in line at the boat launch after you post a, a big <laughs> report, you know, or you know, whatever. But but I look at it as a win. Excited about something, and they're going to utilize it, and it's going to get shared and 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 blown up, and it's going to be a good thing, not a bad thing. But and and also it starts the conversation of why we you know we uh, we are catch and release on all of our lake trout up on on the legs. Um, but it starts the conversation of why it's important to release those, those bigger fish, you know, they're 25, 30 years old. Um, I keep, you know, I start my season off with, I think 15 descending devices that I hand out willingly, take it, put it on your boat. This is how you use it. You know, the, um, and you get people, you get people passionate, you know, once they get the information from you and see how you and see how we handle the fish they get passionate about hey we can do this year in and year out we don't got to kill that fish. you know we can we can come back and catch these fish year and year you know it starts that conversation of of why it's important to protect those those bigger fish you know idaho gill netted all theirs um that's where i fell in love with lake trout was it mm-hmm. was it mccall idaho they eradicated them and so you know what we have right here in our backyard is pretty it is a gem i mean it's you got to go to flaming gorge to get the fishery that we have here you know our average fish up there is 17 pounds um which you know i mean yeah. that's a nice fish yeah it is and so um you're always going to have those people that you know catch a big fish want to kill a big fish and i don't you know hey it's i don't want to get into that debate with with our viewers um but from a guide standpoint is, you know, we're so effective um, that, you know, I tell people all the time, if I, if I let my guests harvest these fish, I would decimate that. We would decimate that resource in two years because, you know, if you kill a 25 year old fish, it's going to take 25 years to replace that fish. Right. And so, you know, the, you're going to see the damage in two years. You know, and, and then you get in the debate of uh, people tell us all the time we got to kill the lake trout because they're eating all the kokanee. They were released in that lake in 1930. If they were going to kill all the kokanee, don't you think they would have done it before 2022? <laughs> Just saying. I think they would have. And so, you know, uh, changing the old guard, you know, of um, even all the, you know, the, the, the mail that we get. I don't know anybody that uses landing mats antiseptic spray and descending devices, you know, and, until we went up there and started doing what we do, nobody learned, nobody knew how to take care of that fish. You know, they were just, they, they trauma out and they're going to float. They're not going down. You mm-hmm. know, if you bring them up too fast without a descending device, they are going to trauma out. They're going to float until they die and then they're going to be dead. And so, um, that's one of the things that I enjoy about sharing that information. It starts, conver- it starts that conversation of why it's important to protect that resource. You know, okay. the, if you're going to harvest a fish, harvest one under 30 inches. He's, you know, he's three to five years old, you know, um, acceptable. You mm-hmm. know, we don't do it just because of the rate in which we catch them. But, you know, I mean, there's, if you want to kill one, there's, you know, this is the size that we would like you to kill. And, right. and everybody I talk to, they're like, absolutely, you know, without a doubt. Doc. So that's what guys, I like about sharing that information. Do you guys feel like sharing that information and that knowledge has ever ruined the experience for your clients like the next day or the next week, just because there is a bigger crowd? No, not for me. 
Never. Do you ever notice that there is a bigger crowd after you post information or share some photos online? Yeah. 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 There'd but we rejoice. One of the one of the quickest things that I do to combat that, Stephen, is that I'm really quick to rejoice in somebody else's success. You know, like another boat where they're they may be catching more fish than me, Kokomo. I'm like, hey, they're killing it over there. Look at that. They're having a great time. They're laughing. The the family's engaged. You know, I mean. I can, we can rejoice in their success from my boat and, and get not the same amount of joy, but pretty close of people are having a great time and, and people want to be around people having a great time. And so you focus their attention on that instead of, well, oh, we're not catching any fish. What are you doing wrong? You know, we don't go down that rabbit hole. Yeah. And you, you know, you just, if you get people out there like that, all it does is kind of, kind of reinforces that people are people are following what you're you're putting out people are watching what you're doing um and as you know that translates into page views it translates into you know searches it translates into into web traffic um social media traffic and you know here's a here's an example and i've had i've had quite a few clients that came out and fish with me. And I still to this day get pictures that they send me now of the great fish they caught last weekend or last summer or, or whenever. Dude, how awesome <laughs> is that, Jeff? Honestly, yeah, that's, how that's awesome is that? my trophy, yeah. I get Absolutely, man. Yeah. I just had a client, I haven't guided now in five years, and I just had an ex-client send me pictures today of being up here on the road, going out with a different guy, sending me his you know, shots of the steelhead that he caught. And having a great time and saying thank you for introducing me to this fishery. You know, and I haven't exactly. guided him for five years. <laughs> yep. Yep. So that's a big if you you give information to somebody, they go out, they use that information to have a, a good day on the water, maybe catch the biggest trout, you know, salmon, whatever they've ever caught. You forevermore have somebody following your content, reading your content, um, you know, creating more opportunities for you. Right. Even if you right. never fish with them again, you've you've you know, you've recruited um, someone to help your business. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. So it's a I'll lot be- of my a, a lot of my trips come from people that have been on the boat. You know, the they it is um, um, they've seen the information online. And so they just needed that last little kick from from somebody else to where they're like, all right, I'm pulling the trigger. I'm doing it. You know, yeah. it's the, um, it, it's neat how it all unfolds, you yeah. know, definitely, uh, you know, people with that have good experiences share that good experience. Absolutely. And a lot of, a lot of guys don't realize that they're, some of their clients have been watching them for years. Oh yeah. Right. Even if they're, they're, you know, they're fishing with another guide, you know, for the last 15 years and you put something out there that, that they like, or they're going to continue to watch you and they watch you and they watch you. And I can't tell you how many times I've had people come on the boat um, and say, you know, I've been reading your reports for five years, right? I'm so glad I finally get to come out and fish. And I've had even more people say, you know what, you posted that picture Yesterday, he posted pictures the day before, posted even better pictures the day before that. I can't, couldn't stand it. I had to freaking book a trip, right? Yeah. So all that stuff, you know, it it works, right? And so yeah. that's where, you know, that topic is is super important is you, you want to be high volume, want to be very successful. You want people to know who you are. You want to build a brand. You better be telling people um, how to how to have good experiences on the water or at least help them, you know, in some way or another, because you're, you're nobody if you don't do that. Right. You really aren't. Well, and, and in saying that, if you had to go back, Jeff, um, you know, I mean, like, you know, you've, you've done a great job. You're very successful, you know, uh, uh, doing what you love. If you could go back to where, when you first started, you know, do before we learned everything that we've learned up to this point, what would be one of the, th- what would be one of the things that you would change um, 
earlier on than when you than when you did catch it. You know what I mean? The the one thing you're like, damn it, really? I should have yeah. I should have been doing that from the day one. What uh, is there one thing that stands out that you wish you would have caught on to before you did of uh, uh, what you would have changed early on? Um, you know, <clears throat> I honestly, there's so many things about, you know, where I'm at now where I, I really wouldn't change anything because while it happened pretty fast for me, um, it, it seems like it, it, the progression was, was right. Right. Um, and there aren't, there aren't a lot of things that I think I'd shy away from the, the, the one of the things that I've, the, one of the things that I've found has very little value to me um, at this point in time is all the guys out there that want to get started in guiding for some reason, and it happened to me too, people feel like they need to get connected to a tackle company. They need to get connected to um, things in the fishing industry that they believe are going to make them popular is going to give them tons of visibility. And so, you know, people kind of get over overloaded with promoting other people's businesses, thinking that it's going to make theirs so much better. And well, but I, I will. Um, so, but if I'm not sponsored by a hundred companies, Jeff, how, how am I a good fishing guy? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> that I think I wasted a lot of time giving that value. I wasted a lot of time trying to please other people. I wasted a lot of time um, latching on to people that were also connected to some of those things, you know, hoping that, you know, maybe they'd like me because, you know, I, I do this for this company or I do that for that company. And I, I still, understand and maintain the value of the friendships that I've developed with, with some of those, those companies. But um, I think if, if I had to do it all over again, I would stay away from all that stuff and sure maintain those. No, I just got dark in here. Yeah. <laughs> you got the power outage. I know I got to turn on a light here somewhere. I'll be right back. No yep. problem. Well, I'm gonna if you can still hear us, Jeff. I'm gonna I'm gonna um, talk for a minute here on on that. I think it, I you know I did the same thing um, early on in my career of of making relationships with that weren't necessarily a two way street. Um, and now in my career, um, I'm more focused on on sponsors that are willing to promote me as much as I'm willing to promote them. Uh, and in a lot of things, it's easier to buy the stuff. I don't want, I don't want to be attached. I use the stuff. I'll promote the stuff because it's what I use, but I don't need the, I don't, I don't need the sticker on my boat to justify the, my personal value. Um, of trying to of trying to find myself and, and who I am in the industry. Yeah, you know, I made the same mistake. You know, I have the sponsors that I have now, they are family to me. And the relationship goes both ways. You know, the I signed some deals early on and I was really quick to realize I was nobody. I was nobody other than a name on a piece of paper that got a discount on something. And you get to a place to where, dude, I'd rather buy it full fare. <laughs> I mean, because I don't want the headache of, of all of it. You know, I, I'm pretty much down to, to three sponsors um, now of, of companies that I, I generally care about, the relationships mm -hmm. that I've built. They, they, they promote me as much as I promote them. And that's, and that's got value, you know, but, but then again, in saying that, I know my value now. I when I first started, I didn't know my value. I was still in search of what my value was, right, and how to justify that value. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know, uh, it definitely, definitely would be one of the things that I, I. It was a bitter pill, 
you know, because when, when you're first, when I first started, you know, you go into those agreements, I gave my word, I will do this. Well, those big companies come back and they're like, well, we can no longer do this because of that, but we're still going to hold you to do what you said you would do. Mm-hmm. And I'm a man and I'm a man enough of my word to where I, I said it. So therefore I'm doing it. And then you realize, man, it cost me a lot of money, got burned pretty good. Um, and so now it's just not that way, you know. And- it's, yeah, it's, it's the time, you know, the time that you donate to stuff like that um, is time that you could spend on yourself, right? On your, mm-hmm. your own business. And I just think, you know, that, that was just what came to mind. That, you know, I thought, you know, I spent a lot of time trying to please other people or trying Absolutely. to be a part of something that I was never really a part of anyways. And right. for the, for the younger guys out there, newer guys, people, you know, aspiring to get into this business, um, just go do you, you know, don't worry about what the other companies got, you know, you're going to save a few dollars here and there, but, um, and if you, if you want to do something like that, if it, if it validates you, if it makes you feel like you're, you know, a part of the guide community or whatever, um, then just do one or two, you know, and do your best for them. And, and they'll likely, you know, reciprocate, but just, yeah, that's the only thing I, if I had to change it all, I wouldn't have spent nearly as much time trying to please other people. Yeah, no, me too. The, like I said, my, my sponsors now are my family, Mm -hmm. you know, they are, I've made personal connections with the people that, you know, that I, that I deal with. And we generally care about each other's companies. You know, I mean, I was very blessed to have, you know, Willie Boats um, got with them, right. You know, probably my first sponsor was Willie Boats hands, hands down, without a doubt. You know, Mm -hmm. it was, uh, it's a company that I hold really dear to my heart, you know, that's to be a part of that family. And so, um, which, you know, still to this day, you know, I mean, it's the very fortunate to, to still have, you know, still be a part of the Willie Boat family. And, and now, you know, Portland Marine Electronics with Striker Rods. And, um, but I found myself through each one of those companies. You know, they were, um, they're, like I said, they're willing to promote me as much as I was willing to promote them. And yeah. so it's a two way street. It's not just the one way street of, you know, when everybody goes into those, those meetings, the, the first thing you want to talk about is this is, this is what I'm going to do. And this is how I, this is how you can help me achieve that. You know, um, now it's, it's, I go in there, this is what I'm going to do. And this is how I'm going to help you achieve your goals. It's not about Todd Logan. no more. It's a, you know, and so once you have that, that understanding of we're both there to help each other, we're not there to take from each other. It's a whole different conversation than what I was having early on in my career. Yeah. 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 It's, it's okay to, to find, you know, spend some time to find those, those, Absolutely. Ways, I guess. Absolutely. But, um, there's, yeah, there's, there's, wrapped up in it. <laughs> there's value in it, but you know, I mean, in all honesty, you know, a lot of the companies, you know, 15%, 30% discount. I was paid full fare. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's because again, you're just a name on a desk, you know, I mean, but I, I generally believe in the, in the, the sponsors, the three sponsors that are on the side of my boat, you know, I use that stuff. I, I bleed that stuff. You know, I, I generally wholeheartedly believe that is what works the best for me. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think having that security as well, you know, the, um, all the other stuff, you know, I use it, but is it, you know, is it everything? Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, and those, those are probably more like, you know, relationships that you would form with, you know, any other kind of business, you know, there's gotta be some, right. Mm-hmm. But just, yeah, I just, those relationships are important, but the actual just people getting caught up in in being you know a 
pro staff or ambassador or whatever, you know, just don't spend too much time on it. Maintain those relationships that you do are fortunate enough to have, but don't go out of your way because it's not going to get you more business. <laughs> that's that's, <laughs> what, that's well, what I learned. It's not going to get you more business. And I think that's a great, that's a great uh, way to put it is what are you achieving? You know what? I mean, as, as we ask our clients, what is success to you? You have to look in the mirror and ask yourself, what is success? Is it, you know, is, are you doing this to get more clients or are you doing this because it makes you feel good and you're, and you're somebody in the industry, you know, the, you know, I mean, that's, it's important to know the difference of that. You know, the, um, I focus more on, does it get me more clients? I believe in running the gear that I run gets me more clients because it is top notch gear. Um, it hasn't always been that way as much as I'd like to see here yeah. and tell you it has, yeah. it hasn't yeah. always been that way. And so I think that's a great distinction right there is, is it going to get me more business or does it make me feel warm and fuzzy when I go to bed at night? Right. Yeah, it's got to be that win-win situation. You know, like when I was guiding, one of my great relationships was was with Chris Schaefer from Potsky. You know, and he's coming out and actually making content for you, um, helping you write content. And that is actually, in a way, helping you get more business. You know, it's promoting Absolutely. their products, but it's also promoting you at the same time. You know, they're putting those videos in Walmart, on YouTube. And so that it's one of those few relationships from a company that is actually a win-win situation. Where a lot of these companies, like you guys are saying, are just discounts. They might share your picture here and there on social media, but they're really not coming out and actually helping you get content that's helping you grow that bus- your own business as well. Yeah, no, that, that's, yeah, that's 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 a good point too. That and I share, you know, I mean, the information I share is because that's what I was using. Whether they're a sponsor, you know, I mean, I said it a couple podcasts back. Uh, I fought the fillet away fish mat. I didn't think it was going to work like it did. And I'm here to tell you, a buddy of mine, actually, he's like, dude, you got to try it. They are that great. I'm like, I'm not buying. There's, (laughs) you know, to me personally, they're super expensive. I'm not investing into another cutting board. There's not a boat I own that doesn't have two in them now. (laughs) You know, I mean, you know, and I think it's, and, and I, and I, I think it's, it has value to, to tell people about, you know, like I said, I'm not sponsored by them. I pay full fare, you know, there's, and I don't want anything from them, you know, but the, once you get to a level of, it works, you know, and it's, and it's okay to promote something, not for personal gain, just, you know, to, because it is a product that you, that you, that I use all, all the, every, every day now, you know, and it, it's changed, you know, as I, as I morph, and, and, you know, year after year, uh, I would have never said that, you know, early on in my career, if you weren't giving me a discount or something like that, I wasn't going to say, it. you know, I was one of those guys, the, the same guy that I'm chastising now, you know, I was that guy, you know, back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, but that's why I say that's one of the things I wish I would have changed is give people the honest because it's honest. And, and, and that's okay. You know, whether for no personal gain, it's, Again, part of that lift everybody up through the community instead of, you know, well, what's in it for me? Yeah. You know, that's getting out of that mindset, yeah. you know. But again, is it going to get me business? You know, that's that's what I focus on now is is the information of it gets me more business. The more information I put out there is the more business that I that I get. Yeah, and your, your goal should be, you know, for a lot of people, I think their goal should be not to rely on anybody, right? To get you business, right? And I think Stephen would agree with this is if you if you do it right, right? You connect yourself with the right the right efforts, then it doesn't matter who is out there, who's doing what. People are going to get are going to call you, right? Um, all the things that that have been put in place um, the things that that Stephen helped me out with, the st- things that I've done on my own, the things that, that I put time and, and effort into for me, right, or the, the people around me, I honestly feel like at this point that 
I almost don't need to do anymore, right? I almost feel like from here on out, because of the all the, the time and energy that I put into this, and I you can fall off a little bit, but you're still going to get business, right? But it's not because you have a sticker on your boat, right? It's because right. you put in so much time, so many hours of, of inserting, you know, content and onto your, your website, um, social media, stuff like that. I, I really get a kick out of, you know, people who comment on the, they devalue websites, they devalue social media, they devalue these things. And, and, you know, I've, I've watched a, a conversation about word of mouth being the absolute best there is. So word of mouth is it. You don't, if you have good word of mouth, you don't need anything else. And that may have been the case, you know, 30 years ago, but <laughs> it's not anymore. And word of mouth is important. I'm not saying it's not important, but if you want to grow your business, if you want to be busy, if you want to continue to work, you know, for years and years and years to come, it's not going to be word of mouth that's going to, going to, to make it happen for you. Well, and and I think it's that old guard, you know. I mean, that's uh, what I tell people all the time is whether you like it or not, this right here is how I reach this generation. Mm-hmm. I don't like it any more than you do. Um, but it is a reality of today. You know, like you were just saying, word of mouth is you have to have a good reputation. You know, I'm, I'm not saying you, sh- you shouldn't have a good reputation. No, that's important. But you're 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 kind of pigeonholing yourself with only relying on that one avenue when we have so many great other avenues to catapult us into into a different realm, you know, uh, for lack of a better word, um, with business. You know, we have to get that information out there. Um, and people are just, you know, they they don't want to look at the whole picture. They just want to look, yes, word of mouth is very important. Good reputation is very important. But we can do so much more with this right here that allows us to reach a whole different audience. You know, and what I tell people is my my clientele list is not getting any younger. I We fight very hard to get the younger people into, into our industry. You know, I mean, as a whole, look at the age of your clientele. It's it's getting really hard to get those kids into our boats. You know, I mean, I, I don't know about yours, but for mine, it is, you know, the more information that I get out there, the more I had um, one of my family members um, from the coast. It was his high school son, Mason, had a buddy that we did the addicted video. He comes over to Corey's house and says, dude, look at this. we got to go do this. And Mason starts <laughs> laughing. He goes, we can go do that. You know, that's my dad's cousin. You know, I married his cousin. And right. he's like, no, you're kidding me. And so, you know, but I mean, that's where the information gets out there is, you know, that's how we reach this next generation is, is through social media. I mean, it's, it's reality. Um, it's but- foreign to us because we're older. But it is, there's such a great value in it that i mean for me personally it's i don't i don't see any other way to do no you're gonna it it allows you guys to breach a much larger um audience you know it's getting attention on you it's getting awareness about you and word of mouth can only go so far you know those people can only tell so many people whereas on the internet all they have to do is share and now it's to their friends and then you get another share and it just grows exponentially rather than just word of mouth which is kind of a linear growth well, I think you're exactly right. As I mean, as you go through your day, how many people do you talk to? I can make one post and reach a million people on this thing overnight. So it's not even it's not even really apples to apples at that point, right? You know, in yeah. in, yeah. in my point of view. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, like with Jeff on his website, he can make one article about how to catch big trout on Shasta Lake, and that'll reach thousands of people every year for many years. You know, it's not just oh, I took this one person out, they're going to tell their friends and now might not see them ever again. I made this post and right. now it's reaching thousands of people for the lifetime of it on my website. And exactly. it can be, it can be um, 
the keywords associated with that particular article, I've noticed because I've gone back and looked at, I, I look at what people who visit my site are looking at, you know, what, what keywords are they striking? What are their interests? What do they want to see from what I have to offer? But to go beyond that, people who are looking specifically at, at something for me, people who are looking for something in general, like curing eggs or fishing plugs for steelhead. I, I see those things trolling flies for trout on the lake. That thing, that article has gotten me more traffic than I could even, even imagine it ever would have. And still to this, I, I wrote it years ago, but still to this day, they, people look at it all the time. It's like, it's probably the, the fifth highest page or piece of, of my website all time. People look at it all the time. And so it may have nothing to do with you. They may not know who you are from anybody. They could be in a different part of the world, but they they stroke in plug fishing for steelhead. That article has been seen so many times that those keywords are sitting at the very top. They're going to get to see your article. Right. For years and years and years, like like you said. So and so and so now, Jeff, you know where you are in your career. Um, you know, not that either one of us going to retire anytime soon, mm -hmm. but have you have you started focusing on an exit strategy? Um, I mean, because you know, we I mean, we're not going to guide. I mean, we're probably going to guide forever, but you know, I mean, the the days of guiding like we do now are, you know, I mean, it's it, there's going to come a time to where we have we, we're going to start pulling back. Um, are you are you focused on an exit strategy as far as putting the building blocks in place now to make that happen down the road? Well, it's the the one thing that that I think is important to to understand. People people focus on okay, well, I'm I'm building my name because I want to be a popular guide and I want to fish a lot and. They, they don't realize, and some people are doing it, even though they don't realize it, is you're, they're building something much bigger, right? right. Besides their name. And right. the amount of people that, that you fish, okay? Let's say a business like mine that fishes 600 people, you know, a year um, or 600 trips a year, multiply that times three or four, right? And then- right. Add, add, you know, 250 bucks a seat to that. Okay, well, and then assets that you have, your boats, you know, your equipment, right. whatever. That's what your business is worth, right? I mean, that's yep. on paper. That's what it's worth. And yep. a lot of people don't realize that you're building a name and you're building this and that and you want to get lots of trips. But at the end, what, do you, what are you going to do with all that work? What, what are you going to do with everything that you've built? Are you just going to quit? I mean, I see it all. I see guys do it all the time. They sell their businesses for thirty thousand dollars, and I'm like, whoever bought it was crazy, <laughs> anyways. But for what, you know? Um, you could be spending all this time generating value in your business. It's like any store, you know, that they have inventory. They have, you know, the books that shows how much money they make every year and sales and. Well, when you go to sell that business, it's what you put in front of somebody and you say, this is what this business is worth. Right. You know, I don't know a lot of startup guides that can, you know, drop a half million dollars on a, on a guide business. But if they were able to, it would be, a, you know, in, in some cases, it would be a, a good buy because that right. person would walk into success. Right. Right. It's all laid out in front of them already. So. Yeah. So exit strategy, you know, I think it's important for everybody to, when you're thinking about, well, what do I do at the very end? Well, you take everything that you've built over the years and you add value. Right. To that to all of that hard work and everything that you've, you've earned and um, don't just walk away from it. Right. Like so many people do. They just, yeah, I'm going to quit. I'm going to go work for Caltrans, you know, and, you know, drive a shovel for, you know, because I'm tired of not having benefits or whatever, you know. Right. But, I mean, most most real successful businesses don't do that. Right? They don't just walk away from them. But I don't see a lot of guide businesses for sale. And I think people should look at that and understand that 
you probably should think about that. You know, I think I think there's a reason why you don't see very many guide businesses for sale. It's because a lot of it is they they didn't plan their exit strategy. There was no tangible asset that I can buy from you that would benefit me to success for future years. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody, you know, everybody that starts their business starts it with what they can take out of it um, instead of what they can put into it. You know, the they, they want the instant gratification of, I want the money right now. Not, you know, building a brand, building a successful business to where at the end of it, say, here it is, a turnkey operation. I've already laid all the foundation. The house is built, you know, and, and that's a great analogy to look at it is you built the house. I'm not buying your business. I'm buying your house. Right. You know, if you look at it from that aspect of, you know, it is, that's how I look at it is I'm building a house that somebody can buy and achieve success farther on down the road when I, when I want to get out of the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's, and it's not it's even, Oh, I was going to say, it's not even just that end where you might be selling that. It's also, if you get to that point where you don't want to guide anymore, if you've got that website that's bringing in referrals to other guides, that's now also more, not necessarily passive because you're going to have to do the work of booking guides and everything but it doesn't require you to be on the water every day. You know, we just, the guy that I just, I got my start under here on the road, just moved to Arizona. He still has his website. Um, him and his wife can still do the bookings and book guides on the road from Arizona. So they can go do what they want, kind of re- live that retired life and still have that income coming in from this business that they've built up for, you know, the last 10, 15 years. Yeah. Well, for, you know, because of the physical limitations that, that I have, you know, I mean, for me, it's a lot closer reality than the average person, you know, just because of the way of uh, the circumstances of me. And so I still want to be part of the industry, but there's going to come a day to where I can't guide, anymore, you know, just because of the physical limitations of, of me. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, the, it's been, you know, in my front part of my brain from the day one of, how do I still get to be a part of the industry even though I can't do what I'm passionate about doing or, or love what I do? And, you know, I can still be kind of a part of that to where, you know, cause I'll have to, I'll have to pull back, you know, as, as I get older, things are going to change for me. And so, you know, the, my exit strategy has always been a forefront in my mind of, you know, at my end game to where I, I, I don't think a lot of the new guides have that in mind. They're going to run it until it can't be ran anymore. And then it is what it is. I don't like that uncertainty. You know, I want that road. I want that house built before I get to that place. Right. Well, I think a lot of people don't, I don't a lot of people don't realize how much these revenue, these businesses can generate. Right. And to to walk away from that to me seems you know seems kind of silly. Um, and then you know there's there's a you talk about not not leaving the industry. Well, there's there's actually lots of of different things that you can still do, right? Even though you're not on the water every day. Oh, absolutely. And you see that with some of the 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 real old guides, you know, the guides that like you said they can't get in their boats anymore, you know, or um, but that's where, you know, I, I think it's good practice, you know, to, to immerse yourself in the industry. And, and part of that is sharing what your knowledge and mm-hmm. that can, that can be something that, that turns into something down the road too. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've considered writing a book about a body of water, <laughs> um, because I just, I really honestly feel like I know. I'm closer to that body of water than most people are. I don't know if it would generate enough interest or not, but um, it just seems seems silly for people who have you know so much time invested in in their business to to not leave something behind, you know, for other people to to use, you know, long after you're gone. Right. That's one of the, the cool things about the the 
the technology now is that you're never going to go away, right? My great great right. grandkids are going to be able to watch videos of me fishing, you know, well, on the sack or Shasta. I, Lake, I Lake. think I, I think I know that body of water, Jeff. And just so you know, I'm not going to buy a copy. I would like you to <laughs> pro staff me and sponsor me a copy because um, <laughs> I would read it. It's the, I had a literally today, this morning, five minutes into meeting this guy, he goes, dude, you should write a book. Just guys, you know, just if, if all I did was just put down guide stories, you know, from my perspective, because it is quirky, it is funny. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, it's the, I would read. It. So yes, you should, you should write a book so I can go guide down there. I'm pretty <laughs> sure I know the body of water. Right, um, right. I'll work for you. And see, my recommendation would be not a book. Do it on YouTube. You know, document your life and your stories and just do that on YouTube. And then I thought we were Tic Tac famous. You I thought we were going to be Tic Tac too. <laughs> 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 but I mean, that just, you know, it's that gets you those documents. You can turn all that into a book, but that YouTube is going to be digital. You know, that's going to go on for forever rather than just a book that's going to be that physical copy. You know, my, that's would be really be my recommendation. Do that video and just, you know, you can either go do a super in-depth thing on like a super uh, specific fishery or just document those stories, you know, do a different video. This is my story from today, or this is my story from 10 years ago. And then you've got that library and that collection. Um, yeah. And you also get that passive income then from YouTube, you know, it's just another income source as well. Yeah, that's a whole nother you can make money, you know, on, on platforms like that now. And that's, that's some, I've well, seen some people try to do it, but it's, that's a whole nother deal there. Yeah. 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 But from what I understand, I just need to take a picture of my feet. I can post that on some uh, <laughs> only fan stuff and get all kinds of residual. I mean, it's, it's not even anything really. And I got, I mean, I got one foot that is, <laughs> you know, it's, it's pretty awesome. I mean, <laughs> hey, you never know, man. You never know what's going to go viral anymore. Yeah, I know it. I know it. Well, Jeff, we've been keeping you here for almost two hours now. Um, was there anything else that you'd like to touch on tonight? Um, you know, we covered a lot. I mean, this is. Uh, thanks for having me. It was fun. You know, this, oh. you could talk for hours and hours and hours. You know, people are probably sleeping in their chairs now, but. Um, yeah, this is it's something that I think people should continue to to be aware of and and understand that there's a lot of good information on on <clears throat> these podcasts, and I'd like to come back at some point and we talk about something real specific, you know. And I think that would have a lot of value for folks if they wanted to learn something about a body of water, or you know, if we ever get any salmon back in the Sacramento River, um, you know, we can talk about that too. But <laughs> yeah. No, uh, there's only one body of water that I'm interested in, Jeff. Yeah. Is keep that river. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, it was a great meet and greet. And thank you very much for, for sharing your your um uh your journey with us. I, I really appreciate it. It was I'm I'm this was one that I was really excited about having was to get to meet you. Um you know, I mean, yeah, it's what you've done on on that body of water is my hats off to you, and and one day I'll shake your hand and well done. Yeah, and, you, uh, you did you fish. did you did something that was that I it's impressive. So yeah, thanks. Well done. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, hopefully the viewers and especially the younger guides can get, glean a lot of information from the conversation that we had tonight. I mean, you guys shared some real like gold nuggets of information that anybody can take and run with in their own guide business. So I, I hope it's a super useful piece of information for everybody. And Jeff, before we let you off of here tonight, um, we like okay. to end every episode with a piece of alpha. Um, so what would be your number one piece of advice for the viewers tuning in tonight? Could be fishing, could be life, um, just whatever you want to leave people with. Um. I, you know, I think, I think uh, my best advice for, for this industry, you know, would be to, you know, don't, don't take everything real personal, you know, focus on your clients. And there's a lot of, a lot of static 
on the out, on the peripheral end of in, end of guiding, and it's it's really kind of a it's kind of clicky, but it's also kind of backstabby, you know. And it's it's a it's a tough business to be in if you let a lot of the the outside chatter get to you. Um, and and man, just stay humble, right? Absolutely. Success is is earned. Um, and it, it just is a reflection of how much time and energy you put into your business. It does nothing to do with how badass you are, how cool of a fisherman you are, any of that kind of stuff. It's it's it just comes from the hard work that you put into it. So absolutely, don't get big headed. Just stay humble. You know, enjoy the ride for as long as you want it. You know, to last and um, just be good to everybody. I yes. So, and mine is, well, I had some, I had an instance this morning on my way to the boat ramp. So mine's going to be about life. It's not going to be about fishing. Um, I had to remind myself of this, this, this very morning of do the right thing because it's the right thing. to do. As much as you don't want to really, really search your soul and do, and do what's right because it's right. So, um, that's where I'm going to leave that. So I did what was right as much as I didn't want to, but it was, it, re, it reminded me of that, of always do what's right because it's right. I like it. Yep. Mine for tonight yep. um, would be to go out and set yourself a five-year goal. Um, something that you think would not be actually attainable to yourself. That way you're pushing yourself. Um, you know, you're never going to achieve more. You're never going to, get out of the position that you're in now without setting a goal that you think can't be reached. Um, you know, when you're pushing yourself and when you're fighting for something, that's when you're at your best, when you're comfortable and you're complacent. Uh, we tend to get a little bit lazy and, you know, it's always better to be working towards something and working towards that goal. And Absolutely. if you go out there and achieve it, uh, set a new one, you know, keep pushing yourself. Yep. All, All right. Person. With that guys, again, Jeff, thank you again. We really appreciate your time. Um, anybody tuning into this, we also appreciate your time. Um, hope you, you gleaned a lot of great information from this episode. Um, if you liked more information about Jeff, you can find him at jeffgoodwinfishing.com. You can also find him on Facebook and Instagram. Um, I really recommend checking out that website. If you're looking for any information on fisheries down there in Northern California, he's got hundreds of articles on all of them. Um, and then if you're looking for more information on what we're doing with the Northwest Fishing Club, you can find us at northwestfishing.club. Um, feel free to jump into our discord. Um, Todd and I are in there willing to share any information and with that guys, have a great night. All right. We're off live. Thank you, Jeff.